Okay. Hi, Anna. How are you? I'm great, Douglas. How are you today? Oh, doing great. Thank you. You look great. Your background, everything looks wonderful. You've done this Thank before, you. I think. A couple of times. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Well, it looks super. And thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much for having me. You were actually on the show before, weren't you? I mean, your name is very familiar. I was. I was. We were talking about the first book and the Allure Legacy series, uh, but uh, it's the first time that we've done video, so. Oh, okay. Last time you were on the audio podcast. Right, yes. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I do like 10 interviews a week, so they kind of all blur together. But I did remember your name when I saw it come through uh, from, from Mickey. So welcome back to the show, and now we get to see you as well. So this is great. Yes, we talked about your book series, and I, that is a tongue twister for me. Uluru, yeah? <laughs> Okay. Aluru. Aluru. You know what it reminds me of is Star Trek, Uhura, for some strange reason. I don't know why. I, I just put these two words together. This has nothing to do with Star Trek, though, right? Your book series? <laughs> no, Aluru is the aboriginal uh, term for what we know as Ayers Rock. Oh, in Australia. Okay. Yes. All so right. the series takes place in Australia. Is it set in modern times or is it way back? It is. It's an urban fantasy. Uh, urban fantasy means what? Uh, well, it's paranormal romance, urban fantasy. So we're dealing with uh, Amelia, who is adopted. And upon doing a DNA test, finds that uh, she has a connection. When she returns to Australia to meet her family, she discovers that she's quite unique in that she is part of a secret society in the outback of Australia of vampires and werewolves. Not something that you find out every day from a DNA test. Okay. Well, you don't look like you have any vampire or werewolf blood. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe a little. <laughs> <laughs> That's the wonderful thing about incorporating science into the Allure Legacy series is that the way that I wrote the vampires and werewolves are completely different than what you've seen in other series. So there's basically no way to distinguish them from human. They are essentially just a bit different in genet in terms of genetics. So it's actually through um, through different selective partners that they've evolved over time and come to exist right beside humans and you would never even know. The only time when they can truly be themselves is uh, when they are at, uh, when, when they are in the colony and it is uh, the secret society in the outback of Australia. Now are these friendly werewolves and vampires? They are. Well, I mean for all intents and purposes, unless someone you know, as we'll see in the second book, which is coming up on November 2nd for release next week. So uh, as we'll see, there is a threat that uh, comes to the colony and. OK, well, we don't want to give it all away. We just we just want to tease people a little bit. I love the uh, paranormal romance genre, but after reading so many books that just did not, you know, uh, pique my interest in the way that I had hoped that they might or fell short of my expectations or relied on the same uh, intrinsic mythos that we continually see regurgitated in uh, paranormal romance, especially dealing with vampire and, and lycanthrope. Now, when did the first book come out? The first book actually came out in June of uh, 2021, so earlier this year in June, and it uh, became an Amazon.com bestseller, uh, an Amazon.in bestseller, so it's an international uh, bestseller, and a Barnes & Noble bestseller as well. Oh, well, that's great. And the second book is out or coming? It, the second book will be available November 2nd. Oh, okay, next, next week, yeah. Yeah, next week. Great. Yeah. Well, looking forward to that. 
Uh, there's something else on your bio here that I wanted to ask you about because I don't know what it is. It says you're also the executive producer of the Author Library Network on YouTube. <laughs> yes. So uh, the Author Library Network is a collection of different uh, shows that uh, all focus around authors or books. So the reason that I uh, have you know, you said uh, it looks as if I've done this. I've been, I've been interviewing, uh, I've been doing interviews myself all day today. All right, great. I'll have to check that out. How many shows have you produced now? Oh gosh, um, <laughs> I think um, me alone. Uh, so I think I'm in the a ninety somethings. Oh, okay, um, quite a few for for yeah. for just one year. And then the additional shows that are coming onto the network um, as well, and the podcasts that we have featured on the network too. So it's growing quite rapidly. I, I got to ask about the Prada. Are you a spokesperson for Prada? This is a this is actually an art installation in West Texas. So it is a joke. There is no uh, Prada anywhere near where this is located. It's located in Marfa, Texas. And that's why it says 1,837 miles. Oh, oh, that way. okay. I, I, the miles because part was covered by your head, so I couldn't see. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I get that's it. That's how uh, far it is to Milan, Italy. Oh, all right. Okay. I thought maybe it was the nearest Prada store. <laughs> it is the nearest Prada. The nearest well, Prada store. We, we the, do the have real Prada one. stores here in the Woodlands and um, yeah. in the Galleria area in Houston. But uh, the Prada uh, in Milan, Italy is um, 1,837 miles that way. That way, okay. <laughs> so this book series, was this your first series or did you write other series before that? No, uh, I have written the Inrovia series, which is a middle grade fantasy, and I wrote that for my daughter. It was really an idea that I had about where animals go after their time on Earth is through. So is the old cliche, all dogs go to heaven? Is that really true? What about cats? What about uh, any pet or um, animal that's been touched by a human essence or a human, you know, uh, has a human connection? Do they also get a pass into, you know, heaven to reconnect after their person has passed on? And so I kind of wrote that series for her um, as a way to, when she is ready, um, kind of help explain life, death, um, the afterlife, and things of that nature. So it's presented in a, uh, in a it's a heavy topic that's pre presented as an adventure with a strong female lead. So I really wrote it for her. Okay. How old is she now? Two. So it's going to be a while. A little while. But... <laughs> It's amazing the kind of questions they'll start asking. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. Uh, especially when dogs and cats die. They, well, where do they go? I know. And then they want to know yeah. where they go. No, I really, I really did just want to create something for her. And it was a great starting off point for me as an author. Uh, because I had written you know, numerous things before that, prior to that. And never had the... Cur it was always a dream to publish and to become an author. And now I am, what, four books published. I have five that are waiting to be published. Uh, how did COVID affect you last year? Did you have to do a lot of cancellations of book signing tours and things like that? Unfortunately, we just didn't get around to even scheduling them, you know, because it was right in the midst of COVID when the Allure Legacy series was kicking off the first book coming out in June of this year. So it, um, it just didn't happen. Now, I, I was able to do a signing in September around my birthday, and uh, that was through very careful wrangling and a lot, a lot of phone calls. And of course, um, I had to be vaccinated and um, show proof of vaccination. There, it was a lot of, of effort to get that signing. So I don't foresee any signings uh, coming up. Okay. You said you're in Texas? Yes. Uh, Texas is pretty well opened up now, right? It is. However, uh, 
businesses have their own corporate standards and policies that they must abide by. And therefore, it is Barnes & Noble's policy that in-person signings are to be halted at this time. Still. Uh, Still, yes, well, unfortunately. Stupid. Hopefully that will change as time goes on. But, you know, we've come up with so many different things, you know, now and solutions via telecom and, um, you know, the Internet and Skype and, you know, Zoom. So there, there are in-person signings that are being done virtually now. And then uh, so, so much is being done online that um, that previously, you know, we weren't able to to do so. I think I'll see that. That I think that as authors, we will see that trend continue, because it's really become kind of the new normal, and somewhat easier in some cases. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, because there is something genuine about meeting people in person. That's true. Which online, I think, I don't know. I'm not sure it's quite the same thing. I don't know if it's a good substitute or not. I think it's True. okay in a pandemic and it's all right, right for business, uh, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just old fashioned. What do you think? You still like to I meet people? Like, and, I, I think it's six yeah. of one and half a dozen of another. Um, I, I, I think that it opens up. Here's what I think is that it opens up possibilities for a longer distance. So say if a bookstore in California or a, you know, if you were to do a, a virtual signing there, then you wouldn't have to travel. So I think that's a convenience. Um, but as far as, yes, going down to your local bookstore and being able to connect with people who are in your general vicinity uh, in the Houston area, that, 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 did, that was a nice experience to be able to have to be able to talk with people who are interested in the book or who re had read the book and um, talk with them about that and let them get to meet, you know, and ask questions and things of that nature. So that, that part is nice, but I do think that we'll see it utilized in long distance ways. I don't think it'll ever truly go away. We just need to repurpose it once it's you know, once we're in the um, back in that time of being able to be in store and in person. Yeah. And I think it's like you said, it's a matter of kind of getting used to it, because I do remember reading stories about people when the telephone first was invented a hundred and some odd years ago and <laughs> businesses started to utilize phone calls between their customers and the and the business. And people complained and they said, you know what, this is not the same as going door to door, shaking hands, seeing people eye to eye. This is a real cheap substitute is what people were saying. And the same of email. And as we're doing now, I mean, the, uh, you know, I, I would love to be hanging out there with you in person, but uh, it's just um, Right. Not, it's uh, just not the not way feasible. it's happening. <laughs> It's just the way of the world. I guess we're just going to have to accept it and get over it. Yeah. All right. Well, Anna, we got to wrap this up. We are out of time. Uh, do you have a website that you want to give out? Absolutely. It's AnnaJWalner.com. You can find all of my information on there as well as uh, Vanessa Morris, um, my student, my other, my pseudonym. And uh, I'm on social media as well, TikTok, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and Facebook at Anna J. Wallner. So Great. Connect well, with me there. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show again. And this time we get to thank see you. Thank you for having me. Best of luck with the book series. I hope uh, it does well. How, just one quick question. How many books do you anticipate this series is going to go? Four. Four. Okay. So we look forward to two I'm more. Wrapping I'm wrapping up the edits on the fourth one now as we speak. Oh, well, great. 